Hey y'all, y'all doing all right? Well, good. Listen, I've got another show I'm gonna do here. I'm always doing something that has been going viral and stirring up some of y'all's uh, concerns. All right, here's another concerning video. Uh, T.D. Jake strikes again, I guess. All right, and there are others out there who are doing stuff, and I don't talk about everybody who do something. I, I'm not that concerned <laughs> about when everybody do something. I, I pick my battles uh, carefully, uh, and I, I choose to go in certain places uh, because I'm going to make sure that I ain't the one that's chasing heresy. They call them heretic chasers, heresy chasers. I'm not a heresy chasers. I never was that guy. All right, I don't battle people on my show. I have uh, just nice little conversations, and you can call it debate if you want to. Today, uh, why I'm calling it when T.D. Jakes attempted exorcism. All right, and I wanted to. I'm kind of glad he did this because it gives me an opportunity to go back and revisit the whole thing called demonology. There's a lot of de uh, there's a lot of ologies that that's in systematic theology, and I need y'all to understand uh, that we at the Sir Walter Jones Show focus on uh, observation, interpretation, correlation, application, OICA. We talk about hermeneutics and eisegetic and and exegetes and all of the words that you've been hearing, homiletics and stuff. All right, we, uh, you know, pedagogy, we, we talk about all those words, what they mean. And many of you are, have been practicing it, you just didn't know the meaning of the words and what did they, you know, how, how to apply them. That, that's pretty much it. But one of them is out of Christology and pneumatology and eschatology and soteriology, hermartiology, angelology, uh, bibliology. Then there's one called demonology, the study of demons and the possessions. All right now it's called Christian demonology and not just demonology, because then if you just say demonology, then you're going to go into the secular understanding Raphael and other names that, that we don't really see in the text. We're not talking about the Apocrypha. We're talking about our the uh, canonized scriptures that we have in the 66. All right. And so today we want to talk about demonology and how it was uh, kind of mocked with T.D. Jakes. I want to play a little clip from Larry Reed to see what's going on in his crazy mind. All right. And this is based off of uh, some of the videos that people do send me. Um, that they want me to analyze it and see what I think of it. And if it's something that I feel that will help the, the bunkers and all the mint, some of you who are coming to the show, I will then air them. Okay. All right. And so I'll see y'all in about 60 and let's open up this wonderful Bible study. Get you thinking, and where the topics are hot, feel free to comment whether we agree or not. Cause he's got something to say, Sir Walter Jones. Sir Walter Jones, he's got something to say, Sir Walter Jones. Sir Walter Jones, Jones. Come on in. The water's fine. Do you I hello everybody so on the so on the Jones show. I'm here. It's the evening edition, baby. Hey yo, it's coming in. The bunkers are here. I see all of you out there. Let me pull y'all a little closer here. Let me pull y'all just a little closer. All right. Come a little closer. Arid, extra dry. All right, and, and I can see y'all now. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, let's talk about this. All you bunkers out there, show love, love, show love, love, love to see all y'all's out there. Okay, um, someone sent me a video of of um, uh, Larry Reed. who was talking on his Instagram, and he was talking about this Bishop T D Jakes casting out demons. He says, uh, or nah. All right, and I said, okay, intriguing. 
Let's see what this man talk about right now. <clears throat> I, I don't like giving, getting my daily information from the, uh, Brother Larry Reed, but sometimes you got to do it because he may be talking about something that many of y'all are talking about. So I figured I will suffer the consequences and go down in the dirt and dig out do-do so that I can get to a place where we can continue to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. All right. God help us all. God help us all. All right. So what do we do about this? And I'm going to go ahead and uh, do this. All right. I, I don't know. Yeah, I, I, I don't know what's going on, y'all. Uh, some some of us, I, I see face I see Facebook, but I don't know what's going on. And, and it might be on Facebook has been acting up, you all. So on uh, the business page, it might not be playing on my regular page. Even I'm trying to play it on my regular page and it keeps freezing. All right. So. Uh, right now, I can't fix I can't fix none of those problems. <laughs> I can't fix it because I'm on my business page and I see where it's freezing. That's Facebook. That's not me. That's not on our end. That's on Facebook end. All right. So let's let's get into this. Let's see if we could play the um, Larry Reed video here to see where he's going. Okay. Let me plug this in. Uh, yeah, April. He he claims that he can cast out as well. All right. Uh, this is him here. Those intercessors and pray. All right. Let's go to the beginning and see where he's talking. Now, uh, full disclosure, I did watch it one time. That's so all you can handle with Larry Reed is watch it one time if you can get through. Now listen to his opening because he's pretty much trying to qualify himself. All right. Now I watched this before I watched the TD Jakes. I found the TD Jakes video and we'll try and play that as well. Well. Hmm. Okay, <laughs> and Anasia said, you're speaking too much truth. Facebook don't like that. <laughs> That's true, Diaz. All right. Hey, what's up, everybody? My name is Larry D. Reed, and I'm the host of Larry Reed Live, president of the NBN Network, and senior pastor of Reformation Church of Atlanta. Mm -hmm. And, you know, Stella Award nominated gospel artist. Mm -hmm. And let me say this as relates to what I want to talk about. Mm -hmm. um, I'm also known in North Carolina, um, especially the North Carolina area, mm -hmm. for um, years and years of, of the ministry of exorcism and house cleansing. Uh, exorcism and house cleansing. House cleansing. Um, so that's why I have a whole lot of experience with casting out demons and um, going to what we call haunted houses. You know, when you hear this stuff for the second time around, stuff you didn't catch. Haunted houses. Okay, I think what they're doing is a play on words. They don't literally go to haunted houses like during Halloween. They're calling these places that uh, that has demon possession haunted houses okay i get it i get it i get it i get it and cleansing homes so my point of view i said all of that that part of my normal introduction just to give you a world that what i'm about to say and what i'm going to say is not just coming from you know me being a commentator commentating on something that has happened about our video because this video <coughs> concerning bishop td jakes is viral and I did watch it. The clip that the neighborhood talk put up, I watched. And then I was able to um, get Kendall to find me the longer, about, I think what, seven minute clip. And I watched it. Um, so I'm gonna tell you what I... Now, I'm glad you caught that uh, perfectly. Uh, this is Carol, y'all. This is perfectly imperfect, this is Carol. You see what she's asking? What is on his wall? Now, y'all see all that African stuff back there, all right? What is on his wall? You all, that's African art. Now, that's suspicious, isn't it? All right, let's continue. Think about it. And this is solely my opinion, just going by what I personally have experienced <clears throat> and I've seen in church services 
coming from the country, you know, North Carolina, and coming from a a, a line of prophets who operate in the ministry of deliverance. So let me say this. Um, all of us have our niche, you and me. Um, for the sake of this conversation, conversation when it comes to preachers and, and, and their ministries and their gifting, it's vast. I mean, I can't even... I can't even begin to. There's so many different types and kinds of us. <clears throat> as unique as our fingerprint, so is the gift. There's so many kinds of us. Did you hear that? You have to really hear a man. You know, even a foolish man will tell you the truth about himself. <laughs> the scriptures alluded to when a fool opened his mouth, you know he's a fool. <laughs> okay. <laughs> things the assignment and the call all of that that's on our life um so there's that and we all have our niche bishop td jake's ministry is the ministry of um and this is what how i'm going to categorize it his ministry has been like the ministry of encouragement okay basically yeah i agree when we didn't hear a whole lot of preachers saying anything about us and it was all about God and what we needed to do. His ministry came about and somehow or another he would take the scriptures, the stories and what was happening and relate it to us in a certain kind of way. Now all preachers have copied it. Mm. But he would be the originator of that in my opinion. Sure, sure. <clears throat> so anyway, mm -hmm. deliverance in, as far as casting out demons mm -hmm. and devils Mm -hmm. I, this is not his ministry, and it's mm -hmm. very evident to me. Okay, now we need to figure out how do you spot a demon deliverer? What does that person look like, and what are the tactics and the tools that a person used to cast out a demon? Because he obviously is... Um, trying to uh, validate the inaccuracies of how Jake's cast out some demon, which we will see in a minute, and what gave Larry Reed the authority to say, you're not doing it right. Uh, J Jake's is older than him, I believe he is, <laughs> and he's been in the ministry longer than this man here, and so uh, I'm wondering what qualifies Larry Reed as the expert on casting out demons. Um, and anybody who has worked with demons, um, I can remember one lady in my service. Now he's getting ready to say something very unusual. Well, it's not unusual for me. He's going to tell you about the time that he did cast out a demon at, a ch at, uh, at his church with a young lady. And, and, and you'll see what he says here. And I looked and I saw that there was a demon in her and I called it forth from the pulpit. And she began to bark and make this roar like an animal. And she began to spin around, began to knock all of the chairs out of me. And so I came out of the pulpit and as I walked to her, she ran from me. And she couldn't get out that side, that that door in the back because that wasn't the exit door. <clears throat> it went to the warehouse part of the building. And then you could have went out that back door. But I stopped her before that. Not physically, but I asked angels to block her way. And so then she ran to my ministry area in the back of the church and began to take all my sermons and my tapes and just fling them everywhere. And I called upon angels to hold her steady. And she, I remember her fighting the angels off that I could see, nobody else could see. And there were people in. Hold up. He said that this woman who had the demon in her was fighting the angels off. Did y'all hear that? The angels were so weak that they could not fight this demon that was in this woman. 
the angels that only Larry Reed could see. This is Michael contending over the bones of Moses. <laughs> and Satan made an, a railing accusation. <laughs> this is Daniel's prayer being held up. <laughs> because God heard it, but it was held up. And Brother Gabriel, okay. Service, if you're in the comment section, comment. I didn't tell nobody I was doing this live as one yeah, I'm glad here you on did. IG. And she began to levitate. Now, she was probably about two feet her head from the ceiling. And so I'm six two. So I had to reach up to grab her ankles. So the woman levitated <clears throat> into the stratosphere. And she was up, up and away, my beautiful balloon. And he reached up and grabbed and pulled her down because she had a helium devil in her. <clears throat> so, <laughs> y'all, this is not funny. And I'm, try I'm trying, I'm trying to contain myself, okay. And I, I would have loved to have seen some kind of video or something to see this helium hydro devil. <laughs> so you can see how high she was. So I can tell you countless stories like this, and I've done it for years so i'm able to recognize that this is this isn't his ministry because it this was um his ministry's encouragement if you look at the whole clip it appears that he was trying to help her but i don't know what happened somewhere in the exchange and this is just my opinion Somewhere in the exchange, I saw some weird things take place. That's how come I know it's not his ministry. Mm. Because there was not any focus on the intruder. Everybody type the word intruder. No, I'm not doing that. I'm fast forwarding you, actually. No, no, God, I'm going to go to 930 you. because you are an intruder on the Sir Walter Jones you. show. You are intruding. Okay, let's see. Let's go to 9. Let's see what it says here. Um. And thousands of hours of my watching and support. But I'm just calling it as it is. I don't know what this was. Mm -hmm. I believe it was an attempt to help. But at the same time, it seemed like uh, it turned into a spectacle. Mm -hmm. And then the people's response of like witnessing to him saying, I'm a man full of the Holy Ghost and certain things like he was preaching. Mm -hmm. You know. It was very weird. Okay. Now, when it comes to the Americas and casting out demons, Bishop George Bloomer is pretty much the goat. Whoa! <laughs> hold the presses. Somebody got to hold the presses. If y'all want to type any type anything in the comment section, type "hold the presses." <laughs> this man just said out of his. Vaseline lips that Bishop Bloomer is the goat. Now we got to be careful with the goats because Kirk Franklin got trouble with the goats. <laughs> okay, we got to keep the goats out of our mouths because goats to some of the Christians is baphomet. <laughs> so, hopefully, you mean the greatest of all time. <laughs> Hold the presses, y'all. Hold the presses. So, George to the bloomer is the goat of casting out demons. Now, now, wait till what he said. <laughs> y'all, we can't make this stuff up, Marlon. Marlon, we can't make this stuff up. All right? <laughs> now, let's, let's see. You remember him going to New Birth? It seemed like demons just love New Birth. They always holler out there when he would go in. Demons always show up at new birth. <laughs> I mean, do y'all understand what's going on here right in front of us? 
George Bloomer is the master demon caster outer, yet the demons feel comfortable, keep coming back to the church to be cast out again. <laughs> I think new birth is slip and slide. <laughs> Y'all, this is not funny, but I, I have a laughing spirit that come over me. I think new birth is <laughs> slip and slide. Y'all know what slip and slide is? Every major city, every major city got a slip and slide. <laughs> Here we have, uh, it, was, it was called Marriott Great America here in Chicago. It's now Six Flags, but it's called Marriott Great America. And you went there once a year with your family, and you had a great time with all the rides, what have you. And they had a water ride there. You was afraid, but you really enjoyed the water ride. <laughs> all right? And it was called a slip and slide, you see? And you you got your you got your blanket you got to you know whatever you and then you got on that thing and you went down that water side oh it was wonderful, I think that new birth is slip and slide at the church because they know they're afraid that <laughs> Bloom was gonna cast them out but they cannot wait to get over there. <laughs> this thing is fun town truth reigns. We had a place called Fun Town right up the street here. It's on 95th and Stone. They even had a, a theme song. Fun Town, Fun Town for the kid in you. 95th and Stony Island Avenue. Fun Town. <laughs> that was the theme. Oh, we love Fun Town. There's a jewel law school over there right now. And it's gone. <laughs> Remember that truth, man? Fun Town. I think New Birth is Fun Town. For the demon in you, <laughs> okay? That's what's going on. I mean, I would not have said that about the goat. I wouldn't have said that. We just had Prophet, <laughs> what's his name, from Africa was there. He done the same thing. They were screaming in the audience. I don't know what it is about that church where they always got demons in it. But. <laughs> they always got demons in this it. This was weird to me. You are weird to this me. so weird. <laughs> And I don't understand. I don't understand happening. it either. What's what happening? I would suggest is that T.D. Jace would call George Bloomer. I would suggest say, that you okay, would call Sir Walter Jones and say. What did I get wrong? What did you get wrong? He ain't got to come back in, back out here and say you, nothing. But you, that you, you don't have to do this, the Larry Reed show, LLR, whatever you call it. Okay. Yeah, this is number two. This is number two. I saw a video with Sarita Jakes. Because I saw your she, video with Sarita Jakes too. Yeah, I remember that. Just pointed at this white man that was yeah. manifesting. Yeah, I remember you did you that. You know, show. mega ministries, mm -hmm. what ends up happening a lot of times, you, yeah. you end up with a lot of loopholes. Yeah, you so got a lot of loopholes. Look behind you. If you're going to do a show, Larry Reed, on demon possession, don't put up relics in the back from Africa and you don't know where those, those heads come from. Even some of the Africans in my comment section are saying, even we don't have those. <laughs> okay. We don't have those in our homes. No. No, all right. I just, I just don't understand. I don't understand. Somebody help me. Help! I need somebody help. Not just anyone. Help! All right. Now let's go to um, T D Jakes and let's go to the scene of the crime. All right. This is life with Jennifer. He gave us this uh, video of him casting out the demon. All right. Let's see. If he is correct on what he said. To the clip. All right, here we go. There she is with the mouth already open. Open your eyes. I'm waiting on you. I don't have time for this. I don't have time for this. Now you're going to hear how he talks to her. He talks to her like a loving father. <laughs> First of all, uh, take that lady over next door into a uh, into a tent. Take her in the office somewhere. Take her away from these gullible people. Because every time somebody s s do that, 
the whole audience go wild. Every time Jake said some cute, the whole audience just went wild. I just can't stand it when you when you're doing this kind of work in front of an audience who's as gullible as this. Every little twitch, y'all go wild. <laughs> loves you even though it felt like nobody else did Jesus loves you he has a plan for your life there was professional mourners when Jesus went to heal who was that y'all fresh in my memory and he told those people to leave the room because they were paid to mourn because they were they were paid to be emotional and just was it was a distraction for Jesus to do his work. This is why this kind of work here you need to turn the camera off and you do it behind closed doors. Is it Jarius? Jarius daughter, was that the one? Open your eyes. No power can stop you. Look at me. No power can stop this. No power can stop this. No power can stop now let me tell you number two what could be happening number two is she know what she doing she's in a situation where now she must act as if something is uh, magnifying itself or showing itself all right and so you've got to now i'm in the role now i have to uh mr demille um i'm ready for my close-up I've seen this happen in some of the del delivering services where now you've got to act uh, off of, based off of what you know the culture to be. Thank you, daughter of Zion. Manifest. Y'all know I, I, I tend to lose words. So she's starting to <coughs> and do these things, all right? That could be one thing that she could be doing. You understand? Stop this. Your change. You gonna have to respect me. You gonna have to respect me. Which means you gonna stand up like a grown woman, and we gonna have a conversation. Now he's talking to her like he's a father. I never seen somebody who was trying to cast the demon out and say, now you got to respect me. I am an anointed man of God. Now look me in the eye. Now I'm going to put you on time out. That's what he's doing. And this is why Larry Reed is speaking to how this man is trying to cast out a demon. As 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 ridiculous as I'm getting ready to say, Larry Reed is correct. This is not his forte. As you can see, he's a motivational speaker. That's what he do. He's used to you sitting in a chair and screaming and shouting and saying amen as he walk uh, uh, to and fro to the east and the west of the stage and saying, get, 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 get ready, get ready, get, get, get ready. All right. He's not used to doing something so culturally inept <laughs> as, as, as what we see here. So he can only talk to her like a kid who's acting like a doctor. He's playing doctor <laughs> and she's playing I don't know a, de a demon possessed person. Okay. You got it? Yes. Yeah. Okay, good. Because I'm a grown man filled with the Holy Ghost. We <laughs> should. <laughs> they know that. <laughs> you came down this aisle because you wanted something from God. And none of those other voices can stop you from having it. And I'm only asking you for one thing. I'm only asking you for one thing, and that's to believe this. And in order for you to believe this, you got to stop being frantic and open your eyes and look at me, tears and all. No, no, no. Look at me. He don't want you to look at me. Look at me. Uh -huh. Look, stay right with me. What is Jake's doing? Jake's is not speaking to her. Jake's is speaking to an audience of behind. <laughs> He's speaking to the audience. You know how politicians, especially on the Republican side, they'd be on there talking about Donald Trump, how wonderful and lovely he is. But they may not mention him. They, they talk about how wonderful the policies. Of, they're talking to an audience of one. They know that Donald Trump is watching Fox News, so they speak up all. They speak this, this way. They speak this way because they know that he's watching. Jake's is not speaking to her. He's speaking to his demographic. Y'all better hear me. I've been in media too long. 
That's why he keeps trying to clarify and qualify and validate who he is. I am this. I am that. Ain't, ain't I, y'all? Ain't I, y'all? Ain't I, y'all? Hey, man, Jakes, you're the greatest. You're the GOAT. <laughs> Because he don't know what else to say in deeming busting culture. So he has to say these things. All of us have been victim of this. We get into something for the first time and we say these elementary uh, romper roomish ABC is type terms. And, we'll, uh, and, and then the, the professionals are like, come on, man, that's not how you do it. That's why Larry Reed coming across as a professional saying this doesn't sound right. It's because somebody created the manual on how to cast out demons. And Jake's is not reading the manual and he's not practicing the manual that man made up. Do you understand what I'm saying, y'all? Life could be better. Yeah. It could actually get better. After all you've been through, your life could be better. Okay? He's not talking to the demon. He's talking to her. He's talking to her flesh. He don't know what to say to the so-called demon in her. So he's now talking back as a motivational speaker. You understand? Your life could be better. I know you've been through trauma. I know you have emotional pain. I know the enemy is using that emotional pain to keep you in prison. But I also know there's a real woman that came down this aisle wanting deliverance yeah. and I'm talking to her yeah. that's the only person I'm going to talk to today is that woman that came down this aisle and he told y'all right there that's the only woman I'm going to talk to today that's all he could talk to He kept at the beginning he mentioned demon but he wasn't talking to no demon he don't know what's in her we all know what's in her because y'all put it in the comment section that's right Her medicine kicked in. You get it now? There it is. So the person who put this video up was talking about how the, the devil was cast out of this woman. And all the comment section up on that video said, Well, look at the Lord, you look at the Lord, look at the Lord. Well, after a while, she took her medicine just a little too late. It was acting up. And while she was there, it went through her bloodstream. Like clockwork, she got better. <laughs> you will not leave here like you came. You will not leave here like you came. The power of God is here. Jesus loves you so much he died for you. He came that you might have life, not agony. Yes, Sanders, Saunders, we're getting ready to go into the Bible, she said. So now we're crit critiquing how people cast. Yes, we're getting ready to go into the Bible. I'm glad you brought that up. That's my, that's my dear friend, y'all. <laughs> All right. We don't always agree, but I'm getting ready to go there. Because it doesn't take a, a spiritual minded brain surgeon apostle to see what's going on right here. They're making mockery of this woman. She's either mentally ill or she is or she's she's drunk or something's going on with her. We see it. We see it. But that whole room. No, they're fascinated by their leader. Whatever you do. Emotionally, we can deal with it, but I'm dealing with the spirit part of it now. As you get as calmness comes over you, the storm is stopping. Watch this the storm is stopping. You don't have to live in that mental storm you've been living in. You don't have to. You don't have to. I know it's been terrible. You don't have to. Stay with me. Stay with me because I got to get, get you all the way through. I got to get you all the way through. God is delivering you right now. Right now. Right now. I have 
have enough confidence in the Holy Ghost in me to believe you can be made whole. Okay, it goes on and on. He knocks her down. All right, and then he goes to another person and knocks them down. I'm sick of it. <clears throat> I'm really sick of it. It drives me crazy. I'm sick of it. I'm sick of I'm sick of commercialization of what is supposed to be protected as what is the scriptures. I'm sick of it. I'm contending for the faith, and we're using this as mockery, and it's a circus. This is Barnum and Bailey circus, and y'all have been pushed into this culture of having church when it's not even laid out in the scriptures on how to do it. So I'm going to read a couple of articles. I'm going to take you to some scriptures here, and I'm going to let y'all continue to disagree with me, but I don't care because I, we, we, I'm tired of talking about the same stuff. And then we see this magic show. We see these illusions over our, of our screens, and then we get pulled into this because of uh, you all being raised up under a silly culture of man-made messology. It's why when I be talking about the whole music industry, the music ministry and what have you, I talk about what y'all have done with music. Y'all have done the same thing with this here, spiritual gifts and the operating of, of, spir of, of, of miracles, signs and wonders. You don't see none of that today in America. You got to literally leave this country to see signs and wonders and miracles. You don't see it here. Why? Because Jesus didn't even see it in his own town. The Bible says that his hands was tied. He can only do one or two miracles. He couldn't do it there because of their disbelief, their unbelief. They did not believe, and he could not work a miracle there. That is the United States of America. Y'all ain't seeing miracles. You want to see it. You want to call it that, but you ain't seeing jack. Because if God would really move like he did in the first century church, there would be more people out there trying to win the folks to the Lord. There'd be more people saved. There'd be more people coming to the Lord. There'd be more demons acting the food too. They'll be pushing hard on that. But you ain't seeing the working of God in your churches. You are not because you're not preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ in your church. You're not. That's why we got so much biblical illiteracy in our church. The church do not believe. The church do not believe. What they believe is in hocus pocus. What they believe is if you make a promise to them and don't give a date, then you can continue to promise people forever. They have children and that those children grow up to believe the same promise. And then that child, those children die. They have children and they, it's uh, on and on and on. In walk the tithing fiasco. And you all are drinking this up like Jim Jones gave them on the Isle of Guyana. They drank that Kool-Aid because they felt that he was a miracle worker. He didn't work not one miracle. And these people are going to be watching Jesus, looking them in the face and say, did not we do these signs and wonders? And Jesus is going to say, I never knew you. I don't know what y'all was doing. You thought you were doing signs and wonders. But a, a worldly person can look and see that that woman right there had some kind of mental shutdown or it was a lack of medicine or what have you. And let me tell you, if we get the right leaders in government, they're going to start uh, coming into y'all's churches and they're going to start suing you all and making y'all pay up or, or, or taking y'all out of there and putting you in jail for practicing medicine, <clears throat> practicing psychology, <clears throat> practicing law and pra all the stuff that your pastors do, giving all this kind of advice, they're going to come after y'all for doing this. You're making a mockery of a woman who was probably in danger. Mental health is nothing to play with. And these people are mentally distraught in your churches and they come to your churches. And what do you do? You pour oil on them, blow on them, knock them on the ground. And you all are you all are causing a worse problem for these people who need medical attention. They need to lay on the couch and talk to somebody who got degrees on the wall. They need to be snatched out of these churches who's making their lives worse because you all are coddling this mental illness. And then you're making them mothers, 
uh, on the mother's board and making them deacons and putting them on the praise team and 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 making them uh, letting them be your pastors and, and the elders and apostles. These people have mental illness, and y'all are lifting them up. And they be, they are psychotic. Many of them. Y'all voted in a president who is a psychomaniac. <laughs> He is one of the greatest narcissistic uh, political leaders we have ever seen. He's an authoritarian. That's why he's in love with Kim Jong-un. That's why he was in love with Vladimir Putin. He's in love with the, uh, the man over there, the, the leader of Iraq, and uh, the Iranian leaders, all right? He's in love with them. Why? Because he is just like them. So your pastor has the same mental problem, and now he's your pastor, and he's doing going through the motions. So in walks Matthew chapter 12, and we see the same thing happening. Jesus and the prince of demons. Then a demon-possessed man who was blind and couldn't speak was brought to Jesus. He healed the man. He healed the man so that he could both speak and see. The crowd was amazed and asked, could it be that Jesus is the son of David, the Messiah? But when the Pharisees, these people, when they heard about the miracle, they said, no wonder he could cast out demons. He gets his power from Satan. Who is this Satan here? This person is called Beals or Beelzebul. B-O-U-L. That is the Greek spelling of Beelzebub. The other spelling is B-U-B at the end, and that is the Latin spelling of one of Satan's uh, uh, classmates. So what does he say here? He gets his power from Beelzebub, the prince of demons. Jesus knew their thoughts and replied, any kingdom divided by civil war is doomed. That's America. Political civil war. A town or family splintered by feuding will fall apart. And if Satan is casting, if Satan is casting out Satan, he is divided and fighting against himself. Larry Reed and Bloomer is trying to cast out a demon. You have got to be kidding me. His own kingdom will not survive. And if I am empowered by Satan, what about your own exorcists? Did you see what Jesus just did? Wait a minute. If I am empowered by Satan, then what about your exorcists? They cast out demons too. So they will condemn you for what you just said. Wow. Did y'all hear what Jesus just said? Can somebody interpret that in the comment section? That was the great slapback. But if I am casting out demons by the spirit of God, then the kingdom of God has arrived among you. I'm here. Wait till they get a load of me. For who is powerful enough to enter the house of a strong man and plunder his goods? Who going to come into the Sir Walter Jones house? Huh? Who going to come up in my house, my daughter, my grandson up in here, and I'm awake? You got the nerve to come up in here? Are you crazy? That happened to me when I first moved here. This was in 2012. I moved into this home right here in this crazy neighborhood. They must have didn't know that a, a grown man was in the house. And I was sleeping in my daughter's bedroom at the time. She was off at college. And I was trying to figure out which bedroom I'm going to make my bedroom. So I was sleeping in my daughter's bedroom. And around 7 o'clock in the morning, the window gets kicked in. And the man had a, his boots on. And he kicked my window in while I'm in there resting. 
and his, his feet his feet went through the window and now he holding on because he wants to get in the house and I woke up wipe my eyes and I didn't go get a gun a, a knife or nothing I was gonna fight this nigga <clears throat> I was going to fight this Negro myself because you had the, the, the nerve to break in my house while I'm in here. And, and, and my, my mind kept going back to my daughter could have been here by herself. And I got angry and angrier and angrier. It only took me two seconds to get angrier. And his feet went through the window and I, my reflex went to grab his feet and I held on to that boy's foot and he screamed like a, like a 12 year old. Ah! I thought you could, you could scream all you want to, but I need to grab your, I'm, I'm sorry y'all. I think I cussed that day. I said, I need to grab your black. <clears throat> I need to grab your black behind up in here. I need to pull you in here. I need to beat the hell out of you, but I need to pull you inside. If you want to come in, I am a gracious host. I want to pull your black behind in here so I can beat the hell out of you. And he's, he's kicking and screaming. Ah! I scream, baby, scream. I got to kill your. <clears throat> and he shook just one time, one too many and got loose. That was the day I wanted to kill a man. I'm being honest. I wanted to see blood and I wanted to see his teeth spread out on the bedroom floor. I wanted that. <clears throat> I wanted that black man dead. The nerve of you coming up in my house and my daughter could have been here. There was going to be a funeral in his family. I would have showed up with flowers. Listen, I'm sorry, y'all. Who told you to raise this nigga like <clears throat> <clears throat> who told you to let this boy out the house? And he ran down the side of the skipping down the side of my house. I think he's he. I think I heard him still crying down the road. This is what's happening here in this scripture right here, y'all. Y'all think I'm just nice and cuddly and cute and just a kind man, kind man. You mess with my family. Now, I'm sorry. Whatever I do to you, I'm going to be like a, like a bulldog. Once they put their mouth, once they grab a hold of your flesh, they ain't letting go. You literally got to shoot that dog in the head. You, I'm sorry. Mess with, mess with minds. And I'm going to have to tell Jesus, turn the other cheek. Jesus, you said you're going to turn the other cheeks. Now I need you to turn it. Do an about faith, Jesus, because I got to kill this. <clears throat> right here. Let me tell y'all here. I'm flesh and bones, y'all. I'm sorry. I love the Lord. He heard my cry. But I may have to kill you in the process. Right here, he said, for who is powerful enough to enter the house of a strong man and plunder his goods? Huh? Only someone even stronger, someone who could tie him up and then plunder his house. That Negro need to tie me up. Anyone who isn't with me opposes me. And anyone who isn't working with me is actually working against me, man. So I tell you, every sin and blasphemy can be forgiven except blasphemy against the Holy Ghost. All right. Which will never be forgiven. I'm sorry. Anyone who speaks against the son of man can can be forgiven. But anyone who speaks against the Holy Spirit will never be forgiven either in this world or in the world to come. I'm sorry. Blaspheme of the Holy Ghost cannot be forgiven. This was a serious thing here. He said, y'all got the nerve to say that the work that I'm doing is based off of the power of Satan. That was such an egregious thing that the Pharisees said that Jesus said, there is no way I can forgive that sin that you just committed. No way. Not even today, tomorrow, on earth, and, and uh, in heaven, or on, on, on the age to come. I'm sorry. I will never forgive it. I could never forgive it. That what he say. So when we get to Acts chapter 8, we do see something here. At chapter 8, we see Philip preaches in Samaria. But the believers who scattered preached the good news about Jesus wherever they went. Philip, 
for example, went to the city of Samaria and told the people about the Messiah. Crowds listened intensely to Philip because they were eager to hear his message and see the miraculous signs he had done. Many evil spirits, demons and Beelzebub and all those, uh, those lords of the flies, many evil spirits were cast out screaming as they left their victims. Watch this. And many who had been paralyzed or lame were healed. So there was a great joy in the city. Wait a minute. Hold up. I got a problem here. You all going around doing demon busting. And I've been hearing uh, y'all, these demons uh, so-called screaming at at some of these services. uh, Y'all watch on late night TV back in the 90s. Remember, we'd be up at nighttime and at 10 o'clock, you see Peter pop off and all these foolish men. And it's a it's a room full of black women, always a room full of black, gullible, silly women. And they're the one by one, they come up there and then they crying and screeching. Now come out, demon, come out, demon, come out, demon. And before you know it, he's raising all his money. But look what they said here. After the screaming and all these demons were released out of these people, it says, then many had been paralyzed or lamed. They were healed too. You don't see none of that going on in the American church today. Notice, whenever you watch somebody like Larry Reed or Bloomer and all these other people, You don't see about how people who were paralyzed that were healed, those were lame that were healed. You don't hear about that. You don't hear about people. You don't hear about them going to the hospitals and healing people. You don't hear about them, the the sick going into the churches with the wheelchairs and the crutches and all that stuff in healing people. What we did hear that thousands upon thousands of people died of COVID-19 in the church. But yet you're going to spend all this time practicing your demon busting on something we don't even see how they cast out demons in the New Testament church. We don't see how it's done. We don't see how it was done. All we know is they turned the world upside down and them demons left screeching and screaming. Exorcism. How was it done today? We don't know. Now, look at this article. How I, I, I read this article before. I'm going to read it again. Exorcism, which is commanding demons to leave the other people, was practiced by various people in the Gospels. The book of Acts, the disciples as part of Christ's instructions. Other using Christ's name in Mark 9. The children of the Pharisees, Luke 8, 11. Paul did it, Acts 16. And there was other stuff in Acts 19. It appears that the purpose of Jesus' disciples performing exorcism was to show Christ's dominion over demons. You understand? T.D. Jakes focused on who? Himself. He focused on himself being so anointed. You see what I'm saying here? And to verify the disciples were acting in his name and by the uh, his authority that's not what y'all doing today i'm an anointed man of god shut up and sit your big head down it also revealed their faith or lack of faith it was obvious that this act of casting out demons was important to the ministry uh, to the disciples hassle never it is unclear what part of casting out demons actually played in the disciples process the discipleship process. Interestingly, there seems to be a shift in the latter part of the New Testament. Uh Uh-oh, somebody put shift in the comment section. Shift. Because if you're going to cast out devils, I need to see other signs. I need to see other ones. That's all you can do is cast out demons? Sit your your butt down. Regarding demon warfare, demonic warfare, the teaching portions of the New Testament refer from Romans through Jude, that's a long, that's a big portion of the New Testament. From Romans all the way to Jude, y'all, y'all know how many books that is in between? Refer to demonic activity, yet do not discuss the actions of casting them out. So what did y'all do here? How are y'all casting out demons? How is it that Jakes was wrong and L.A. Reed or whatever name is, is right? 
How is that Bloomer is the goat? What is it that he's doing that he read in the scriptures on how to cast out demons? And number five or six, why are the demons keep going back to Bloomer for a slip and slide? Nor are believers exhorted to do so. We are not told to cast out demons. Nowhere are we told to do that. You all are trying to go to Mark chapter 16. That last portion was added in the text. We talk about this all the time. We are told to put on the armor, y'all. Somebody put in the comment section, put on the armor. Put on the armor. Put on the armor. To do what? To stand against them. Ephesians 6 and 10. Put on the armor. Not cast them out. Put on the armor. We are told to resist the devil. James 4 and 7. Be careful of him. 1 Peter 5 and 8. And not give him room in our lives. Ephesians 4 and 27. However, we are not told to how to cast him or his demons out. Of others or that we should even consider even doing it I said even twice put on the armor put on the armor all you're gonna hear is ding 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 you should be making ding sounds as a Christian as you walking down the street singing do why did he did he did he did ding that's what you should hear if you hear oop that means he's shooting you in the back and it's going into your skin. You are a coward because you turn your face and went the other way. You're running. That's why the armor is in the front. Ding, 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 ding. You should be making ding sounds. It should sound like Christmas time every time you walk down the street. Ding, ding, ding. That's the darks. Be careful of the wiles of the devil. He cannot enter into a Christian. God says, I will not share my glory with nobody, especially that foolish Beelzebub, Satan, Lucifer. Y'all better hear me. Y'all been lied to. Somebody lying to y'all from the pulpit. The book of Ephesians gives clear instructions on how we are to have victory in our lives in the battle against the forces of evil. The first step is placing our faith in Christ, which breaks the rule of the prince of the power of the air, y'all. When Jesus had a conversation with Satan, he didn't say, now, loose here. Uh, come out, Satan. <laughs> come out right now. Listen to me. I'm an anointed man of God. I says, sit down. Look me in my eye. Now, wipe your tears. Uh, <laughs> he didn't do none of that. He talked to Satan. He said, did not the words say this? Have you not read what the scriptures say? He had a cool and calm conversation with Satan. He said, oh, hold up, bro. Hold up, man. I am he. Before all these, what? I am. Now, have you were there at the beginning, Satan. You were there. Here's what the words say. And if the words said it, I said it. And Satan was like, ah, uh, okay, 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 okay. Let me find something. Let me find something. Let me. Okay. Did not the word say this? And God was like, okay. Yeah, but the word also said this, and Satan was like, oh, okay, 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 you got me, you got me, you got me, you got me here, okay. Now, did not the word say this too? And what was Luke, what was Satan doing every time he would, they would have this conversation? He kept taking Jesus higher and higher and higher. When they met, he caught Jesus at a really weak time because Jesus had just got through fasting. And there Satan shows up at your weakest moment. And the Bible says he kept taking them up to a higher place, a higher place, a higher place. And this is what Satan do. He not trying. He not going to initially bring you down. He's not going to initially tear you down. Satan wants to lift you up. That is the false teaching that y'all have been given. The end result is death. But the beginning of this is I must lift you up. I must uh, put you on a pinnacle. 
I must make you famous because if I make you famous, then you will have influence over all these other people. That's how Jim Jones became so powerful. Satan was not after Jim Jones per se. He was after all of those people who would be an influence and Satan was able to kill almost 1,000 people with the power of one man. So he lifted Jesus up and kept taking up on a hill, up on a mountain and see the whole world. I can promise you all this if you just bow to me. If you just bow to me, you and I can do an amazing work on this earth. And when he realized he couldn't get through to him, he walked away, but for a season. He coming back, y'all. And then the Bible says, then the angels came and ministered to the Lord. Y'all better hear me. You've been taught wrong. He going to lift you up, make you famous. You're going to be wealthy. You're going to be, that's why all this prosperity teaching is going on. You're going to get the riches and the wealth and the heart, the, the cars and the houses and, and the cryptocurrencies and all this stuff. He's going to lift you up and make you famous and wealthy and all this stuff. You're going to be great uh, influence over your family so that he can it, take a bowling ball and then bam, knock down all of the pins at one time. Y'all better hear me. The gospel, it cuts, y'all. We are then to choose against, again, by God's grace, to put off ungodly habits and put on godly habits. This does not involve casting out demons, but rather renewing our minds. After several practice, uh, practical instructions on how to obey God and his children, we are reminded that there is a spiritual battle. It is fought with certain armor that allows us to stand against, not cast out. Stand against, not cast out. Stand against, not cast out. The trickery of the demonic world, we stand with truth, righteousness, gospel, faith, salvation, the word of God, and prayer. That's all of it right there. And guess where it started? It started with the belt of truth. That's where your vital organs is right there in the belt. Lord have mercy. Mm. 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 Y'all get it now? Are y'all understanding? Oh, I love the pushback. I love the pushback. People who are pushing back on me are those who love demon possession. They love to go in there and make you think that they're powerful, that they're casting out demons. So you see, y'all going to see some stuff in the comment section about how this man is a lie. Why? Because they are making mockery of what's going on here. They are making money. And I'm messing with the money. I'm messing with the money. I see you. I see you, Clifton. I'm messing with your money, Clifton J. Gray the third. I'm messing with your money, brother. I'm messing with your money. Find something else to do with your life, my dear brother. But I'm messing with your money. You talking about greater works? You don't even know what greater works mean. The fact that you put greater works in the comment section tell me you don't even know what that means. Does that mean that the works that we're going to do is going to be even deeper and greater? Well, if that's the case, y'all ain't doing what Jesus did. I don't see it in America. If that is the greater you're talking about, Clifton, I need to see you raise somebody from the dead. I want to see it. Because if I don't see it in your life, then what are you talking about, brother? Hmm? Where are you? I need to see your works. So unfortunately, your interpretation of greater is flawed. We screwed up. We are screwed up. And it's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. Can somebody put that in the comment section? It's ridiculous. It's just ridiculous. Let's see. No, I'm not even going to read it. 
I know I was gonna read from my dear brother Tony Evans. I'm not Tony. I got this, man. I, I got this. I don't need you today. I can I can handle I can handle this myself. People don't know you, y'all. Stand on the truth. Don't get pushed aside and get discouraged by when you see stuff in the comment section or in your church or on your job. Don't allow people to push you out of what you're hearing today, push you away from what the word really saying. Don't do it. Let the word do the work. And don't worry about these naysayers. Why? Because it's ridiculous. You don't see them doing any work. They just go about what they heard. Let me tell y'all something. Because I, I, my righteous indignation got fury coming out of my nose right now. And I'm sick of you. All of you. Michelle Carter, I made you a moderator on, um, on YouTube. All right. Carol made you a moderator. TL, you also a moderator on YouTube. I meant to tell y'all that earlier, right? You all are moderators. The three moderators on YouTube, you have the power to get rid of all this mess that I'm seeing pop up. Not comments. Moderators, do not delete negative comments. We don't do that. Understand? Do not delete negative comments. Those who go after me, don't do that. Only delete porn or spam. But do not delete negative comments because we are not punks over here. All right? We need the people to see the negativity so that y'all know how to handle it. All right? We don't, we, don't, we don't run from the naysayers or we would have a problem in Christianity if we was always running. All right? So let's, let's talk about this. The problem with biblical illiteracy is this. You all Dependent on Sunday morning for all of your biblical needs. That's where the problem is. All your biblical needs. All of it. All of it. All of it. All of it. You went to church for all of your biblical needs. Mm -hmm. Bernice is saying... Heal the sick, raise the dead, cleanse the lepers, cast out demons. Who's doing all that today? I want to see y'all's works. I want to see it. I want, to, I want you to introduce me to a church who's healing the sick and raising the dead. I want to see that. Show me that church and I'm going to join it. You hear me? Show me that church who's raising the dead and healing sick folks and casting and cleansing lepers. And I'm going to join that church this weekend. I need, I need, I need the address. I need the website. I need the phone number to the pastor. All right. I need that address, that information. I will be joining them this weekend. I'm going to tell my pastor, sorry, pastor, I found a new man or woman. I might be a woman's pastor. I don't even believe in women pastors, but I'm going to that woman pastor church. And I'm going to join because if y'all pushing scriptures in our face and saying this is what you should do and we don't see it nowhere. That must be telling me that that scripture means something. And this is why y'all uh, uh, failed my class on OICA and dispen dispensationalism. <laughs> oh, thank you, Bernice. <laughs> she said, I'm saying the same thing. No power, just a form of godliness, denying the power there. No power. I'm going to join that church, Bernice. I want to see it. I want to join it. Because the proof is in the pudding. America is not as dumb as y'all think they are. They tired of you country bumpkins. Now I gotta stop saying country because the north is just as bad as the south. I say country bumpkin. And I'm from the south. I mean, I'm, I, I wasn't born there, but I was always down there in Jackson, Mississippi. I'm always down there in Little Rock, Arkansas. Always down there. Always down there. All right. 
The world is tired of y'all saying one thing and you ain't proving nothing. You ain't bringing no receipts. And you're going to go out there trying to evangelize the dying world. They're like, show us the receipt. Well, the Bible says, shut up. You and your Bible need to go to hell. That's what they're saying to us. You and your Bible and your your Cadillac driving preacher all need to go to hell. That's what the atheists, agnostics, and those worldly people keep telling us. Go to hell. We don't want that. We're doing fine. We got, we're got we prosperous here. And y'all in your church singing Nero, my God, to thee. And y'all sick. Whenever they call an altar call for anybody who in the house is sick, half the room stands up. Y'all, I haven't talked like this in a long time. So can I vent? Can I please vent? Can I vent, please? When I drive to church in the morning, Sunday morning around 9 o'clock, I'm on the road driving through the town. I see out there at 9. Sometimes I drive to church at 8 o'clock, depending on what service I'm going to be at. Let's say 8 o'clock. Guess who I see outside jogging, riding their bikes with their children and their dogs? I don't care what season it is, around the seasons. They out there early morning jogging and running and hiking and biking and canoeing and what have you. Guess who I see out there? Worldly folks. And guess who I see in the church coughing and sneezing? Got, uh, got the, the, every time you shake their hand, how you doing? Says, oh, 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 Brother Jones, it hurts. How you doing, brother? Bo? Oh, you know, my gout is acting. How you doing, sister missionary? Bo? I don't know my back. They all week long to pray for my back. How you doing? Oh, my head. I don't know what's going on with my head. How you doing, sister? Oh, my eye socket socket them fell out two weeks ago. How you doing? Oh, my God, my, my, my right foot. They, they had to cut it off because of the sugar died to the beat. How you doing? Oh, offered and snuck in. And, 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 and How you doing? Well, I need to lose some weight. I'm 300 pounds, but the Lord, pray for me that I lose just wait i'm sick of y'all i'm sick of you i'm sick of you you are sick but you're sick in your mind you sick in spirit lowly at heart and the world out there living longer and they're healthier but you so busy eating yourself to death and then sunday morning coming <laughs> oh am I, if i could just get it if i could just make it to the church pastor gonna pray for me you are a fool and then you're going to go out there on the street corner trying to help the world. And the world has got more money than you. They're debt free and they're healthier than you. They got all their teethuses. They got strong bones. And you out there, uh, you can hardly walk. So then when they do an altar call, half the church gets up and get, stand in the line for healing. This is ridiculous. What are y'all doing in that church? Signs and wonders and healing and, and, and raising the dead. You ain't doing jack. You ain't doing nothing. You are lying to yourself that you can do something, but you are a liar. You are, you are preaching a false gospel to yourself. You can't fool me. I wasn't born yesterday. I was born the day before yesterday, so I had 24 hours earlier to really learn your foolish ways. The problem is, it's a generational mess because nobody talked this stuff at home. The problem with the American church is Sunday. For generations, you were taught that you can only get the word on Sunday, and mama and daddy wasn't teaching you the word of God at home. When my kids would come to my house, when my wife and I divorced, it was when I started realizing I need to sit up and take notice of what the word is saying and teach it to my children or I'm going to have a problem. So what I would do, I would make breakfast every morning. I wish my son and my daughter was on the show right now and they can tell you every morning. I would make them breakfast. And when they got through burping, we sat at the breakfast table after they washed the dishes and I did this. All right, Walter Jr., you're the oldest. Open it up. Now I want you to start reading first. I want you to read first. 
And he started reading. Now, what does that say? I don't know, Dad. And let me tell you what this said. All right, Rebecca, your turn. What does this say? Ah, uh, uh, uh. And she read like that. Okay. Do you know what it means? I, uh, I think it means every every morning I did that. Every morning. Because I did not want my children to be Sunday morning Bible study, study uh, children. No, that wasn't happening. I want them to get the word at home. So when they got to church, they can say, uh-oh, Pops, Pastor Miss, he misread that. Oh, pa Pops, Deacon says such and such in Sunday school. Uh, that's not what you taught us. That's the problem with today's church is you got the word seven days late. Every week you got the word seven days late. So not only are you biblically literate, your finances stink. You are in debt. You got a 420 FICA score. Why? Because you're lazy. And prosperity, when I was coming up, was taboo. You didn't talk about wealth and riches and all that. So you didn't talk about that. And a rich person was considered going to hell. Because y'all read from the scriptures that it was easy for the camel to go through the eye of a needle than a rich man to get to heaven. And y'all took that as a saying, we can't be rich or we're going to go to hell. Foolish. Foolish. And when Jesus died, he was buried in a rich man's tomb. <laughs> Oh, boy, boy. This is why I get in trouble with you, you five-fold ministry people. This is why I get in trouble with you, because I talk like this. I don't care how you feel about me. Somebody, a remnant of people, I don't care if it's just five people, they're going to hear this gospel, and they're going to be changed based off of what I'm saying, because they're going to be more noble than you. That's who the Bereans were. They were more noble, which means they took the word of God. They didn't take my word for it. They took it home and studied it for themselves. And they said, uh-oh, I found an error here. P Pastor was wrong. Be more noble. Can y'all put that in the comment section? Be more noble. Be more noble. We need to be more noble than everybody else in your church so that you can spot a fake $20 bill. Why is your life in shambles and you letting the church take all your money? Bad enough to get your heart and then they got your money too. And you struggling. The pandemic came and showed everybody that you were swimming naked. You made us believe that you had everything going on because you drove up at the church with a Lamborghini or, or a Lexus or something. You just drove up and hey, hey, you want us all to, to praise God because you in debt because you got a new car and you got a nice house. But you lost your job and all of that was lost. Bless it to you, Jimmy. Thank you for the 20. The pandemic came. You lost your job and we didn't hear from you. We didn't hear no more testimonies from you. We heard nothing. And then you caught COVID and almost died. You're on the ventilator. What happened to all that prosperity? And the world had money saved up for a whole year because they knew what to do with their monies. And they saved it up. They had enough for three, four, five, six months. I've been telling y'all on this show for years. Do not put your money in that church first. You better put your money in that house first. If you are getting your paycheck and you're putting in the church first, you are a foolish person. You are a foolish person. The scripture says take care of home first. You're worse than an infidel if you can't take care of home. You are a foolish woman or man. If you get your paycheck and you take out 10 and get that to the Lord first, you're not giving it to the Lord. When you pay your bills at, ho at home, you give it to the Lord. Whatever you got left, you can give to the church. You understand? I've been telling you all that for years, years and years. And these pastors will go in their pulpits and say, don't listen to these Facebook pastors. 
Don't listen to these social media pastors. They're leading you down the rabbit hole. They don't know the word of God. They haven't been ordained or licensed. And no bishop came and had an ordination service for them. And, you know, they don't have a choir and a band and a mother's board and a praise team and, and mime. I'm going to talk about the mimes in a minute. All right. All right. They don't have all this stuff. And they talked about us like dogs. They talked about us as content creators like dogs saying we don't have the word of God in us because we preaching on social media. And guess what happened in 2020? Actually, guess what happened in, in, in 2019? COVID came in 2019. My mother died. We buried her. And I believe at the funeral, COVID was already in the house. That was December of 2019. COVID was already in the house. Y'all better hear me. And then come February when it really was acting a fool in February and March when it hit me and almost killed me. What happened? The governors from all around the country was shutting down the, govern the government and your churches can only have 10 people at your church. Guess what the pastors who was talking about the So Walter Jones show, then what they was doing. Bring, 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 bring. Hello. Hey, uh, So Walter. Hey, hey, who this? Uh, this is Pastor Bobo. Hey, Pastor Bobo. How you doing? I I'm fine. I really enjoy your show. And I'm sitting here like this man is lying. He's a bald-faced lie. I was watching his live stream when he was talking about us like a dog. Bling. Yeah, I was watching your show, man. And I mean, man, you are a powerful Bible study reader. You are the goat. You are the greatest of all time. I float like a butterfly, I sting like a bee. I'm like, this nigga. How may I help you, Pastor Bobo? Listen, listen, listen. Uh, we don't have our our, our our cameras. We haven't bought any cameras, and we haven't we we don't we're not online. You know, we don't we we not. I said, Oh, really? Y'all not online? Well, hold, hold, hold on. I called my brother Ratney up. I called my brother Larry up. We've been online for a long time, y'all. I called him. I said, Hey, y'all, listen, listen to this phone call. I need y'all to hear this lying preacher right here. Oh, okay, now praise me, praise me, praise me. Mm -hmm. Yes, tell me how great I am. Mm -hmm. Yeah, listen, I need to get to my people. I can't get to my peoples because we're not online and we, we can't have service, all right? And so I need you to know if you can come by and, and set up our, our, our social to the media. What? Social to the media. Uh, okay, okay, social media. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So set that up for, and I, I, uh, Brother Rodney, Larry, can you, did y'all hear this fool right here? Yeah, I, I hear him. And my brothers would tell me, yeah, I got a call from his his friend and his brother called me and this preacher called me too and this preacher called me too my brother Rodney myself and my brother Larry spent the whole pandemic plugging in your your church we spent the whole pandemic plugging in your lazy church when we told you 10 years ago prepare get ready and the same one was calling us stupid and don't listen to us was the one calling us up Saying, can you come and plug us? Plug it in, plug it in. And y'all giving all y'all's money. When we ask y'all, we put the cash app up here and we ask y'all, just give five dollars. Just give ten dollars or something like that. We were struggling. Me and both all three of my brothers, we were struggling trying to get our platform out there. And all we were doing was saying, listen, if you support the channel, we could buy equipment. We can buy microphones and lighting and, and boxes and, and cords and, and iPads and stuff and stuff like and, and computers so that we can make our y'all say y'all love our content. So if y'all would just give to the cash app, then we could really build this up so that we can spread the gospel all over the world. And y'all's pastor said, Don't give them any money. Don't give them nothing. Bring your money to the storehouse. That's what they were telling y'all. Bring your money to the storehouse. But then when the pandemic came, y'all went to the storehouse and guess what? There was nothing in the store. The cupboard was bare. 
We can't afford it. We can't afford it. Wait a minute. I've been paying thousands of dollars to this place through tithes and offerings. And you mean to tell me I can't come back to the storehouse to get nothing? No, we're going back to the Larry Jones show. We're going back to the uh, Elder Rodney Jones Sunday school. We're going back to the So Walter Jones show. At least we're going to uh, get the word of God from them. And we're going to give just, we'll give five hours to them and we know we're going to get good content. And the people of God was blessing the cash app. And guess what me and my brothers were doing? We was going down there to Best Buy, Amazon.com, and buying stuff. Y'all bought this. These two pianos right here, y'all bought these pianos. They, they don't cost $5 a piece. These pianos cost hundreds of dollars. Y'all, the bunkers bought these pianos. And I used them both for two different things. They both serve two different purposes. That's why I have two. Y'all bought the laptop that I'm on right now. Y'all bought this. Y'all bought the webcam. Y'all bought this box, the light that you see in here. Y'all bought this boom stand. Y'all bought this right here. Y'all don't ever see this. This is my podcast. Y'all bought this. I got a mixer over here. Y'all bought that. I got a switcher over here. Y'all bought that. Every cord in here, y'all bought it. And y'all was able to keep my wardrobe going so that I can at least look decent while I'm preaching the word of God because y'all didn't want no slap, sloppy preacher. I even fixed my teeth because of y'all. My old show, you, my teeth was all crooked like this. I would talk and they'd be yellow and all kind of stuff. It had tartar and all kind of stains in my teeth. I just wanted to preach the gospel. I just wanted to preach the gospel. I wanted to preach the gospel. And the bunkers was just saying, listen, Brother Jones, we love you, man. We want you to look better because you represent us. The cash app was doing that. And I would take that money. I wouldn't give it to wine, women, and song, prostitutes, and, uh, and gambling, and all that. No, I wasn't doing that. I, every dime I was putting it back into the So Walter Jones show. Y'all did that. Went down there to the dentist. I said, listen, the bunkers say I need to do something with his teeth. So I want to see y'all every three months. They said, okay, if you got the money, we got the time. I said, okay. I, and and I, I, I gave them my money. Thousands and thousands of dollars I spent. These are my real teeth, y'all. These are not implants. These are not fill-ins. These are not plug-ins. These are mine. Y'all paid that I get them all nice and clean. I got Invisaligns in it right now. They straightened up. It's more sparkly whiter. Every cavity got filled. All the tartar got scraped. Y'all preachers don't talk like this. So now I can smile. Because on my old show, sometimes I cover my mouth. Because I was kind of, like, oh, I can see. But I ain't got no money. I can't afford to do this. The Lord says, ask the people. They'll take care of you. They'll take care of you. And I'm going to bless them in return. So I did that. So every dime that y'all gave me. Then I went down there to the store. Stopped buying more. I threw away all my old suits. I started all over. And I started buying new suits. Every Sunday y'all see me with new suits. New suits. New shirts. New shoes. All this stuff. I was buying them for you. I wasn't buying them for me. I bought them for y'all. Because y'all said, Brother Jones, we want you to look decent. When you represent the bunkers. So here I am. Somebody sent me. Somebody sent me. In the in the, in the the P.O. box. This beautiful tie here. Because y'all know I like to dress. This beautiful tie came in. With this hanky, handkerchief. Beautiful. I'm going to wear this. I'm going to try to wear it this week. Because the bunkers bought it. I'm going to wear it. Now. <laughs> When I read, I don't know who one of y'all sent this to me, but here's what it said. It said, uh, so Walter Jones, so it must be somebody who watched my show. It said, here is a gift for you, Elder, because your matching tie and pocket squares are driving me crazy. <laughs> what I tell you? And this person said, that is a fashion faux pas, sir. May God continually bless you for blessing us with your YouTube ministry. Here's the problem with the statement. I don't wear pocket squares. <laughs> I don't wear pocket squares. A person misunderstood. Can I prove it to you? Let me prove it to you. I don't wear pocket squares. <laughs> Here's my proof. These are not squares. <laughs> These are cloths. 
I just know how to press my clothes that it look like a square. They're not squares. <laughs> I have two squares in this whole box right here. I don't, I don't even wear them. <laughs> Y'all understand? The one I had yesterday, that white one, it looked like a square, but no. It's a cloth. It, it's in here somewhere. It's a cloth. <laughs> you see, the bunkers even think they know me. They don't know me that great. I don't wear pocket squares. That is my fashion faux pas. <laughs> All right. I just want to, I just want to prove to y'all like, why you got your stuff down here? Because I wanted to make sure I let y'all know that I like the cloth. <laughs> I'm a man of the cloth. Mm. All right. The bunkers, they care for me. They tell me slow down. <laughs> okay. I, I'm telling you, you content creators, if you got somebody out there, if y'all got some, if you got a community, you better thank God for that community. They're going to make sure that you are healthy. They're going to make sure. Because when I started working out, I mean, y'all even paid for my L.A. fitness. I want to work out. I want to be more healthier. Because I listen to my community. So if you are a pastor and you think that you supersede everybody, what, they, what they're trying to tell you, they're trying to help you. I met with my pastor Friday. I sat in that meeting for an hour and almost a half, and I told him all of the things that I grieved about. And we had a man-on-man um, a -man meeting. I needed him to know, Pastor, I love you. I need you to be more healthier. I need you to be more sound. I'm trying to help you. Since I've been here, I've been trying to help you. I don't need this church. I'm not trying to be the pastor of this church. You are the pastor. And if I'm going to serve in this church, my job is to help you be successful at what you do in feeding the flock. That's why I'm still here. And I told him in his face, I could start my own ministry tonight and double the ministry of this church tonight. That's what I told him. I told him I preached the gospel last night. 5,000 people heard the gospel last night before this meeting. Why would I want to be pulling on your coattail to preach on Sunday morning to 70 people? I preached to the continents. I preached to continents. The bunkers are all over the place. We're in London. We're in South America. We're in South Africa. We're in Canada. Look at my, if you look at my, my statistics on YouTube, we're all over the world. Why would I want to pull on your coattail to preach to 70 people on Sunday morning and do nothing all week long? I love this gospel. I got to, I got to stop. I got to stop. Somebody asked me about the mind ministry. They said it's getting on their nerves. Guess what? It gets on my nerves too. I don't like mind ministry. I don't like it. And I have good friends who are in mine and they are really good at it. I don't prefer it and I don't care. And they know I don't prefer it. I find it entertaining. I would rather see mime at the club or at the, at a theater. Let's say the theater. I don't go to club. I rather see mime at, the, at a theater. I don't prefer it in the church. I know where it come from. We have brought a lot of stuff in the church. I'm not against miming. I just don't prefer it in church. I don't. It has become, it has become quite a competition like praise dancing. It become a competition. Like dancing under the so-called dancing under the Holy Ghost. Oh, you know, when the music started playing and then somebody go in the back and grab a partner, come to the front of church and start doing and y'all turn it into a competition. That's why you see these YouTube videos of these preachers trying to dance and try to compete or who's got the fanciest legs. I can't believe that I'm living in a world today where the church has become competitive. So I don't prefer the mind. There's an article I'm a, I want you to go to. I'm not going to read all of it because I'm already way past my time. All right. I, I didn't pull the whiteboard out. Y'all forgive me. 
All right, this 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 article here is in GodQuestions.org, the place that I like to go because I I find them they're sound. Go to this article that says, "Does the Bible say anything about miming?" All right, read it for yourself. The person who asked me that question, and it gives you a long, in-depth study on it. I thought it was probably the best article I found on miming. Who is performing it? Who is the focus of the mime? What subtle messages may be sent during this mime presentation? Read all of this. And they give you at the beginning, they tell you where it comes from. It comes from ancient Greece. The word mime is taken from the mask artist named Pantomimus. Mimus. That's what it comes from. And it goes on and on. Read it for yourself. All right. Meanwhile, I'm going to just go and sit and have some dinner. And in, enjoy myself as much as I can. Uh, but I'm telling you. Now, this art, this uh, this this scripture here, Matthew chapter ten, is what the 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 I I, I can't. All right, I'm gonna do it anyway. I saw where you put in Matthew chapter ten and eight. Here's what it says. Heal the sick, raise the dead, cure those with leprosy and cast out demons. You got to finish the rest. Give as freely as you have received. Don't take any money in your money belts. Uh Oh, if you're going to raise the dead, cure and uh, the leprosy, cast out demons. Why are y'all accepting money? Hmm. Hmm. Pearl, the site was, is called, uh, gotquestions.org gotquestions.org and then type in miming and it'll come up it said here don't take any money in your money belt no gold silver or even copper don't carry a traveling bag with a change of clothes and sandals and he's talking about carrying it and even a walking stick don't hesitate to accept hospitality because those who work deserve to be fed Whenever you enter a city or village, search for a worthy person and stay in the home until you leave town. When you enter the home, give it your blessing. If it turns out to be uh, a worthy home, let your blessing stand. If not, take back the blessing. If any household or town refuses to welcome you or listen to your message, shake it the dust from your feet. Y'all have heard this all your life. Y'all ain't doing none of this. None of it. You sure ain't going from house to house. You ain't going from town to town. You ain't healing nobody. You ain't kill, curing nobody of, of COVID. We ain't talking about all these other diseases. Let's talk about the immediate disease that seems to be the one we always talk about. Cancer, COVID, flu now is, is on the uprise. Okay. What about these? We ain't curing nobody through laying on our hands and, and none of this stuff is happening at our churches. None of it. None of it. Okay, the bunkers want me to stop. I'm going to stop because I, I work for the bunkers. <laughs> I work for the bunkers. You understand? I am the greatest servant there is among the bunkers. I serve them. And when they say stop, I'm done. All right? I didn't mean to go this way, y'all. And I sure ain't going to apologize for it. But when you all were coming in the comments uh, trying to go against this teaching, when I knew I was in the word, my righteous indignation is rose up. It's always been uh, uh, taken in part. That's what we have only known in part. Yeah, we're blind in part. About 600 of y'all showed up today. I want to thank you. All right. Which means I'm going to take a break tomorrow. I'm going to take a break. I guess I'll see y'all on Thursday for our usual Bible teaching. Go to YouTube if you want to. You should have been there because Facebook was really acting up. I don't, we don't know what's going on with Facebook. It was just really acting up. So YouTube, was, <laughs> we were doing fine over there. Subscribe to the channel. If about 500 of y'all who are still left subscribe to the channel, we could spread this gospel all over. Hit the thumbs up. I only see 116 thumbs up. That means only 116 enjoyed the message on YouTube. <laughs> and I'm not going to cry about it. <laughs> All right. Pray for us. 
as we pray for you, God, we thank you for your blessings. We thank you for these people who were here, whether they were indifferent with me, whether they didn't like it, whether they just misunderstood me. I still got to love them regardless of it. Fury hit this room hard, God, and I understand now why you went into the temple and whipped those money changers. I get it now. I get it. Yet after you did that, you still died for the same people in whom you whipped. You laid out on that that cross and died for the same ones who was crucifying you. So here I am, God. I give my life to be burned at the stake if need be. If I can just preach the gospel, allow them to let me be a whooping boy. They can destroy me. And if I do die by preaching the gospel, for God I live and for God I die. I do know that once I open my eyes again, to be absent from the body will be present with you. So if I have to die a martyr, I'd like to die preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ. And I know a great reward is coming with the hopes that my life would be, my legacy would be, that's how he died, swinging and punching through the word of God, cutting sharper than any two-edged sword into the marrow and the bone, fighting like Stephen did to his very death. Thank you for these people who are fighters just like me. It's just a few of them, but they're standing on the wall. They're not sitting. They're standing on the wall of justice. Even if it's just us, they're standing on the wall, fighting the good fight of faith, contending for it. Bless their homes, O oh God, as you bless mine, and continue to be with their children when they are away. We thank you and we love you. We give your name the praise in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 All right, y'all. I got a plate waiting for me upstairs. I was smart this time. Made sure I prepared my plate of food <laughs> upstairs because I do not like to really talk to people after these shows. The bunkers know that <laughs> I don't like to talk after the show, so I don't pick up the phone. I don't call nobody. I like to relax with my family after these kinds of shows. Right. right? And the bunkers know it and they give me that time to relax. All right. So that's just me. So if people get angry because they don't hear from me after my show. You you every evidently don't know the rule of the house. <laughs> we we know. Now the classes are starting back up in November, y'all. It was supposed to start in November the eighth, which is Tuesday, the Zoom classes. Unfortunately, that is the day you all are voting. So we cannot have a class on the eighth. Because I do not want anybody have an excuse to say I didn't vote for this senator because I was on the Sir Walter Jones show. Even though the polls will be closed by the time we go, we start teaching at seven o'clock central. <laughs> All right, but I don't want no excuses that you didn't vote, or I don't want y'all not to come after we prepared this wonderful feast, and because you're standing in line uh, at a polling place. Uh, because it's so long of a line and you didn't make it. So it's best not to do it on the 8th. Unfortunately, that moves us to the next Tuesday, which is the 15th. All right. And I know many of you are waiting for this to get back into the Bible study, but blame it on the politics. Okay. So the 8th, I'm sorry, the 15th of November, we will resume. We will go for about five, six weeks. Uh, I like to go about six weeks if we can. I don't want to get too far into Christmas. All right. So we go about six weeks. That'll, that'll end on December, maybe the 13th. Okay. And then you all can have a break, Christmas break. And then we're going to start doing once a month. All right. So that no one would be burnt out. So I see you all November the 15th for our first class. And we're going back to the basics. O-I-C-A for that first session. We're going back to interpretation. Back to interpretation. And then we'll go back to end times after that. All right. I thought I'd let you know. Just in, just in case you all don't see any emails in the next week or so, 
just know, save this show, and rewind it to this point. I love y'all. Take care of yourselves, please, and one another. Will y'all pray for me tonight, please? Because I'm sure I'm going to be so exhausted after I eat. Just a lot of energy has left me. I'm sweating and I'm tired. <laughs> I love y'all. Good night. Well, good, goodbye. 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 Enjoy yourself. Bye. Goodbye. 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 Well, goodbye. Goodbye. Fellas, does it seem like you can't get a good woman? Ladies, wonder why you can't keep a man? Then read The Four Women That Men Desire, Volume 1, by Sir Walter Jones to figure out how to break the cycle. Go to Amazon.com to get your copy today. It's 10 p.m. Do you know where your children are?